This lecture is the continuation of our previous video where we started creating this hotel management app. In this lecture, we are going to implement further tasks of this activity. So far, we have implemented till task 5 of this activity. So let's move to our next task. In this task, we have to create three new rooms. Room 1, which will be a double room. Room 2, which will be a single room. And room 3, again, will be a double room. So we have already created two room objects, room 1 and room 2 here. And here we also have created room 3. Okay, so this task is already done. Next, we want to create an object for hotel with properties, name, star and rooms. So let's do that. Let's create a hotel object. And I'm going to use the object literal to create this object. And this hotel object should have three properties, name, which will be Hilton Town Center. Okay. And next property is star. So let's say this is a five star hotel. And they should also have this rooms property. And this rooms is an array. Okay, so the rooms property value should be an array made of three room, you know, three room objects which we have created above. So this rooms array will have three room objects which we have created. So room one, room two, and room three. Okay, so this is our hotel object. Let's go to the next task. So add a method info to the hotel object, which prints the information of all rooms. So task seven is to add an info method to this hotel object. So let's say hotel dot info. Okay, and let's use this function. Now, this info method of this hotel object should print the information of all the rooms which this hotel has and this hotel has three rooms room one room two and room three and you know this room one room two and room three are the objects these are the instances of room function constructor okay so what we are going to do is we will iterate through each element of this rooms array using for loop and for each of these rooms we have this info method right so we have this rooms construct, you know, room function constructor, and to the prototype of this room function constructor, we have this info method. So we will use this info method on these room objects to get their info. So let's do that. Let's loop through each element of this rooms array. So var i equals zero, i smaller than this dot rooms dot length okay and i plus plus and inside this for loop we will simply call the info method of room object and how we will get this room object we say this dot rooms so this we have this room array and to access the element of this room array we will use the index and index in this case I'm using I so when value of I is 0 that means we are trying to access the first element of this rooms array which is this room 1 object when I equals 1 that means we are trying to access the second element of this rooms array and the second element is this room 2 object and why when I equals to 2 then we are trying to access the third element of this rooms array and the third element is room 3 object and each of these three objects has this info method which prints the information of that room. So we are calling that info method. Let's save the changes and let's call this info method of this hotel. So hotel.info. Okay. And before this for loop, let's also add some 
new lines in order to separate it from previous messages. So console.log and let's add two new lines. And for that we use this backslash n. And then let's say room info. Okay, let's save these changes. Let's go to a web page and let's refresh the page and see if this info method is working. So here we have the info of all the three rooms. Okay. Let's go to next task. So add a method book to the hotel object, which take number of guests as a parameter, then book the first room that is suitable for them. So let's add this book method to this hotel object. So hotel dot book function. Okay. And again, we want to loop through each element of rooms array. And then we will check if that room, you know, which room is suitable for the guest to book. So a room is suitable for booking when that room is vacant and when the capacity of that room is sufficient for the guest. So to this function, we will receive the number of guests as its parameter. So the first thing which we have to do is we will loop through each element of the rooms array. So let's copy this for loop from here and let's use it here. Okay. Now we are looping through each element of this rooms array. And then for each room, we will check if that room is booked or not. So we use this dot rooms I. So the element which is which we are iterating currently, this room I will give us that and we are check. So this will be an object, right? This will give us the room object and this room object has this booked property. So if that room is booked, that means this booked property will be true. Okay. But we want to book a room which is vacant. So for a vacant room, this booked property will be false. Okay. So this book, the room is vacant when this booked property is false. And here we will use this not operator to reverse its value. Okay. So this expression will give us false if the room is vacant. And on that we are using this not operator to make it you know, to change it to true. Okay, so this is the first condition. The room should be vacant. That means this book property should be false. And the next condition is that the capacity of that room should be greater than or equal to the number of guests. Okay, so we say this dot rooms dot capacity. Okay, and this capacity should be greater than equal to the number of guests okay so if these two conditions are true then we want to book this room okay and to book that room we have this book method for each room so we will call that book method okay so this dot rooms i dot book okay so we are calling this book method of that room object which is satisfying both of these two conditions and once the room is booked we simply want to break from the loop because we don't want to iterate further on other rooms other rooms on the other hand uh, let's also create a variable called room found so room found okay and let's set it to false now when a room is booked then we want to say that room found is true okay so room found is true so when a suitable room is found in that case we are booking the room and we are setting this room found the value of this room found a uh, variable to true okay but if a suitable room is not found in that case we want to show a message. So for that, we are going to use this room found variable inside this if condition. So this room found will be false. That means the suitable room is not found. Okay. 
So let's use this not operator here. So if a suitable room is not found, then we simply want to display a message. So console.log and what is the message? Sorry, there are no there are no rooms matching your query. So let's say sorry. There are no rooms matching your query. Okay. And let's now book a room. So let's say hotel dot book and we want to book a room for two person. Okay. And let's also say hotel dot info. Let's save these changes. Let's go back to our web page. And if I refresh the page, you see this message room number one has been booked and then it is displaying the information of all the rooms. So now room number one is booked. Let's move to our next task. So add a method checkout to the hotel object which takes room number as a parameter and checks it out. So let's add this checkout method now. So hotel dot checkout. And this method will take the room number as its parameter which we want to check out. And then inside this method again we want to loop. So let's go up and let's copy this for loop from here. Okay and let's use it inside this method. So we want to loop through each, you know, each room and then we want to check if the room, if the current room which it is iterating through. So this dot rooms i dot number. So this room object has this number property. So if the number of this room object is equal to the room number which we have received as the parameter then we want to call the checkout method of the room object so this dot rooms dot checkout okay so we, are, we want to call this checkout method of this rooms object and once the room is found and checked out, we simply want to break from the loop. Okay, and that's it. Now let's check out the room, room number one, which we had booked. So hotel dot checkout. And we will pass the room number. So room number is one. And let's also print the info. So hotel dot info. Let's save the changes. Let's go to web page. Let's refresh the page. So room number one has been checked out and now room number one is vacant. Okay, so this is the hotel management app. In this, you can get the info of all the rooms of a hotel. You can check in a room. You can check out a room. Okay. So I hope this activity has helped you understand how the concepts of function constructor inheritance and prototypes can be used in real projects if you like this lecture like this video subscribe to this channel and share it with your friends